Hey everyone, this video is an updated video for the AR4 startup and commissioning procedure. This video will be on how to start up your uh, AR4 robot. This is for the Mark II or the Mark III robot. At this point you should have your robot assembled and we're here at the end of chapter 2 in the manual. Um, I'm going to assume that you have all your dip switch settings all set properly and you've got the robot fully assembled and you've uh, completed everything up to this point to the end of chapter 2 in the manual. The next thing we'll want to do is download the software we need to run the robot. At the very top here we have the control software. This is the uh, GUI or the interface software. This is the uh, source code and then over on this side is the uh, EXE version which most people will probably just download the EXE version but we'll come back to this a little bit later. Um, the thing I want to talk about right now is the uh, Teensy board um, software. So the Teensy board is the board in the base of the robot. This is a Teensy 4.1. This board runs at 600 megahertz and it has the processing power to run all of the robot kinematics. It has enough I.O. to handle all six motors for the robot to read in all of the encoder values for each six of the motors on the robot and also control a few external axis if you had a seventh uh, or eighth axis travel track. Now this only controls the robot arm itself. If we want to control anything else such as a gripper, an actuator, uh, a small 5 volt servo, that's where we have a secondary board in the project and that's what we have down here, down here is these auxiliary board um, sketch downloads. So if we look in the manual and go to chapter 4 for example we have an entire chapter on building a servo gripper and so we get into the bill of materials you'll see here that um, using this servo gripper calls for the use of an Arduino nano board to control it and it controls a small 5 volt servo as shown here in the bill of materials and if you needed more IO points you could also use an Arduino Mega instead of the nano to control um, external devices but um, that's what um, these files here for and if you go to the tutorials page on the website or come here to uh, my uh, YouTube channel I have a number of tutorials you can find this one on uh, AR4 robot grippers and IO connections that will give you more detail and information on using the Arduino board and uh, using external IO for grippers and other devices so coming back to the downloads page we're going to click on the TNC 4.1 sketch and then we're going to download this zip file to our computer I have downloaded the zip file here and then I've unzipped it. So I have an unzipped version of the uh, Arduino sketch here for the TNC board. The next thing that we'll want to do is to um, install the Arduino software. So I'll come here to the Arduino website and install the latest Arduino IDE software on my computer. Once the Arduino software is installed on my computer, I can open up this sketch file and it will open up the Arduino IDE program. Now the TNC 4.1 is an Arduino compatible board, but we have to make sure we have the right drivers installed in the Arduino IDE to be able to talk to the TNC 4.1 board. If we go to the PJRC website for the TNC 4.1 board, we can find the instructions for installing the uh, TNC Duino. This is the um, this is the driver that uh, allows the Arduino IDE to talk to the board. So if we look at the instructions here, it tells us to open up the Arduino IDE, go to preferences, and then um, in additional board managers to copy in this link. So what we're going to do is copy this link right here. So if we go back to the Arduino IDE and we go to file preferences under settings, we have additional boards manager. We can click on this button and then we can go to a new line and paste in that um, that address that was listed on the PJRC website and then click OK and hit OK again. The next thing we'll need to do is uh, put plug power into our robot and also plug in the robot's USB connection to the computer. Then back here in the Arduino software, if we go to Tools, Board, we can find that we have a TNC dropdown. We'll make sure to select TNC 4.1 and then we'll go to a uh, port and it looks like my uh, robot is connected on COM port 4 so we'll select that. The next thing we'll do here from the main page on the Arduino IDE is click the button for upload and that will upload the sketch to our board. You can see it will say compiling sketch and it will compile it and then upload it to the board. Thank you. 
So you can see there it goes through the Teensy Duino software opens, it goes through a programming operation, and then it says done uploading to board. So now we'll go back to the downloads page and we need to download the control software. You can download the source code if you like, and then you can open that directly in Python, or you can download the exe file here, and that will take us to the uh, download page where we can download that software to our computer. So I'll do that and download the software. So I've downloaded the interface software to my desktop and I've unzipped it. So I can open up this folder and then find the ar4.exe file and open the software. So once the software opens, you'll want to acknowledge the AR4 license file. Hit OK on that. And then we want to establish communication from this uh, control software to our robot. So we'll come here to the config setting tab. And you can see by default um, the Teensy COM port is set to zero. And then we also have our auxiliary board COM port for being able to talk to um, the Arduino Nano board for any grippers that we talked about earlier. So I will come in here and I know that my um, robot is on COM port 4. So I'll put in a 4 and I'll, I'll hit set uh, COM for the Teensy. It'll say system ready. And if I go to the log, it will also say uh, communication started with Teensy 4.1 controller for the last uh, entry. Okay, so now that we've established communications with the uh, controller, we're back on the main controls tab here. I'm going to pull in a video feed of the robot so you can see what it's doing. I have the robot powered off and it's standing vertical in the vertical rest position. So the drives are powered off and I can move all these joints by hand. Um, the first thing we want to do is check the um, encoder values just to see that the encoders are working. So we're going to load the uh, test encoders program. So we'll open that up and we'll hit play on that. And so that program will start playing where it reads the encoders and it puts the encoder values down in the manual program entry field here. These values are just arbitrary values just so you can see that it's working. These are not calibrated values. So we're not calibrating the encoders. We just want to check that they work. Um, so what I can do is I can... Um, pull the video in here a little bit closer and I can reach over and manually move one of the joints. I'll move joint one and you can see as I rotate it to the right that the J1 encoder value um, gets smaller and when I move it to the left it climbs and becomes higher. So that's all I really want to see here. I want to go through all six joints and make sure that the value for all six joints changes uh, in each direction respectively. Now if I find that I'm not getting feedback and it just stays at a thousand or one of the numbers just starts climbing out of control, then we know we have a problem, in which case we would want to um, look at the uh, wiring schematic in Chapter 6 in the manual. And what we'd want to do is come in and check that our encoders, the brown and the blue wires from the encoders, connect on these color of the Ethernet cables, the the blue stripe and the blue solid wires to pins 14 through 23. So we'd want to come in and check those connections all the way through to the encoder. And then we'd want to make sure that each each encoder is getting a positive 5 volts and a ground and that those signals will check that back to the um, distribution block here. We want to make sure that terminal 1 has a good solid um, 5 volts from the Teensy board, that Terminal 2 has a good solid ground signal from the Teensy board, and that uh, Terminal 3 has the 3.3 volt signal from the Teensy board. So those are the things we would want to check if we have a problem with the encoders. Now the next thing we want to check is our limit switches. So we're going to load the uh, test limit switches program. Now there is a limit switch on every uh, joint for the robot. There's a limit switch right here on joint one. There's one back here for two, and three, and four, and so on. And those limit switches are for the calibration program. Those are limit switches are each at a far axis limit. So when we run the calibration program, the um, axis will automatically drive to that limit switch. And when that limit switch is detected, that becomes the zero position for that joint. So before we try and run an auto calibration, we need to make absolutely sure that every limit switch is working. So with this limit switch program loaded, I'm going to hit play. And again, it's doing the same thing. And down here at the bottom, I've got values for each limit switch. So for example, for joint one, if I reach over and toggle that limit switch manually, this should go from a zero to a one. 
So you can see there, when I press the switch, it's a 1. When I let go, it's a 0. So you can check each switch there. We can do the same thing for joint 2. Uh, just like that. So you go through and, and depress every limit switch and make sure each one's working before you run a calibration program. So the next thing we want to do is try and jog each axis. So I've turned power on to the controller and all the motors are powered on. And then um, we would want to open up the manual and go to uh, chapter 7 on the startup procedure and look at the directions that each um, axis should turn when I hit positive or negative. So you'll refer to this diagram as you test each axis. And uh, let's start out here. I'll just start out with axis 3 so that we can get the uh, robot arm down into view of the camera. So I can see here that joint 3, when I jog in both directions, works. And then I'll test joint 1 in both directions to make sure joint 1 works. The same with 2, and 4, and 5, and then 6. So we verified that all the joints work and they're all jogging correctly and in the correct direction per that diagram. If you find that the motors are not turning in the correct direction, you will want to refer back to the diagram, again the wiring diagram, and you'll want to check your direction and uh, pulse connections from the board from pin 0 through 11 for each of the drivers. And um, if you find that when you jog an axis, if it keeps, for example, if you hit uh, the negative direction and the positive direction and it moves in the same direction regardless of which button you've pressed, it's typically a problem with this wire. You've got a bad connection typically on your direction if you try and jog the robot and it goes the same way no matter which way you go. But these would be the uh, wires to check if you have an issue with the uh, jogging direction of the robot. One thing I forgot to mention a few minutes ago when we were checking the limit switches is that if you find that one of your limit switches is not responding or has an intermittent issue or your calibration uh, has issues where your calibration stops and says that the calibration is unsuccessful, it's typically an issue with a bad connection on these limit switches. Um, these limit switches are wired so that when the switch is off and not depressed, that it is providing a solid ground signal back to the input so that the input is pulled to ground and when you depress the switch it then sends the input a positive 3.3 volts so what you want to do to test each of these limits which is if you find you have a problem you want to get a multimeter and put your uh, negative lead on the ground terminal and put your positive lead for example if we're dealing with the joint one limit switch you'll put your um, your positive lead from your multi-tester on, um, on terminal 26 here and then that should be showing a positive uh, that should be showing a solid ground signal when the switch is not depressed and then when you depress the switch it should switch to a solid 3.3 volts so if you find that it's not doing that then you're probably gonna have a floating voltage issue and so that's the things to test, is to make sure that every single switch is providing a solid ground when it's off and a solid 3.3 volts when it's on. Now going back to where we were at on making sure every joint moves and moves in the correct direction, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and run a calibration procedure now that we've also checked each of the limit switches to make sure they're working. So we can go to the Config Setting tab, and you can see here that we have our first stage will um, calibrate joints 1, 2, and 3, and then our second stage will calibrate joints 4, 5, and 6. Now I could go through and hit the buttons to calibrate each joint individually, and that's not a bad idea, um, but I'll go ahead and just do the auto calibrate right now for the purposes of this video. And so when I hit this, it's basically going to take joints 1, 2, and 3 and drive them to their full limit, and it will uh, stop when each of them hits the limit switch, come off slightly, and then come back down onto each switch slowly just to get a, an accurate speed and moving onto those switches. Then joints 1, 2, and 3 will go to their 0 or home position. And then the second stage of the calibration will start where joints 4, 5, and 6 
will uh, run to their limit switches. So now we can see that the robot has ran through its calibration and is at its zero position, but you can see here it's not a perfect L, it's a little bit out of calibration. So the next thing we'll talk about is our calibration offsets. Uh, we now have a procedure for fine tuning the calibration. For example, if you put a digital level on axis three, for example, and find it's off by 0.3, you can go into the uh, software on the calibration tab and put in minus 0.3 and then just click uh, calibrate single axis for joint three and you can see it'll recalibrate that joint and then that fine tuning value has brought it right back to a perfect zero again. That's everything I have for this video on the startup and commissioning procedure. If you have any questions please uh, reach out to me at info at and thanks for watching.